Well, what we got here is failure to communicate. You know, you guys claim you want people with really interesting backstories, and then you keep bringing back boneheads like Coach Wade, the self-proclaimed Dragon Slayer. Dragon Slayer? Just where the hell are all the dragons? Does he think he's going on Survivor Hanali? Does he think he's going to frolic in the autumn mist with that rascal Puff the Magic Dragon? Or worse yet, you brought on Jimmy Johnson. Nice guy, but we already know his backstory. And besides, if we all had his football money, we could burn ours. And that was before he started hawking boner pills on late night TV. Now speaking of bones, I got a big one to pick with y'all, but that in a minute. First, here's a sampling of my backstory. When I was 10 years old, I was actually saved by John Wayne himself by a drunken Kirk Douglas down in Durango, Mexico. Kirk wanted to take me to a whorehouse, Duke saw it differently, and in a manner only John Wayne can said, hey, leave the kid alone. Well, I saw Kirk Douglas melt before my eyes. Although I did thank Duke, I think going to a whorehouse with Kirk Douglas would have been loads of fun. When I was 23, I was working on a film called The Villain with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I was having dinner one night with a gal when Arnold came in and sat down at my table. As I was cutting my steak, he leaned over like a baby bird and opened his mouth. So, I baby fed him. After two or three feedings, he got up and left because he realized he wasn't going to shake me. I, David Tidass Needham, actually baby fed the future governor of the state of California. When I was 29, I sat at a table and had dinner and drinks with the Rat Pack. That's right, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Sammy Davis Jr. Now that's a backstory. And just for the record books, in 1973, I became the youngest person to ever be hired as a set dressing lead man in motion picture history. Why? Because I always get the job done. That's why. So for close to 40 years now, not a measly seven weeks, I've outwitted, outplayed, and outlasted all of my peers. Now, back to that bone picking I talked to you about. Last year, you guys called me every day over a five-day period, told me to pack a bag and be prepared to stay three days while you whittled the herd down from 50 to 16. Then, without so much as a canceled text, email, phone call, homing pigeon, you guys had the unmitigated gall to let me sit in my house like the ugly chick that was stood up for the prom. Really? Just who the hell do you think you are? I've done more things and forgotten more people than y'all will ever know. What you were really saying to me was, fuck me, fuck me. Well, you know what? Fuck you. You may be the toughest game show in town, but the toughest game show in town poses no more challenge to me than does your toughest toenail. And if you think for one solitary second I would even consider going on your show after the narcissistic, egotistic, cannibalistic way you've treated me, well, seconds up, hell yes I would. Give me a call. We'll do lunch. In the meantime, I think I'm going to go call Mr. Johnson about those boner pills.